If you're a TV reporter, you dream of covering a story that will follow you for the rest of your life. An event that years later people are still talking about, maybe even more than they did when the actual event happened. Paul Lindman knows all about that. He was a reporter in Portland, Oregon. 50 years ago last week, he was sent to cover a story on the Oregon coast where a dead whale had washed ashore. Here's part of the story he filed on November 12th, 1970. It had to be said, the Oregon State Highway Division not only had a whale of a problem on its hands, it had a stinking whale of a problem. What to do with one 45-foot, 8-ton whale dead on arrival on the beach near Florence? All right, sounds basic enough, but what happened next has become iconic in the annals of local TV news. This video has been viewed hundreds of millions of times online, and here to walk us through that day is the reporter himself, my good friend Paul Lindman. Paul, it's great to see you. Good to see you again, Joe. I can't believe you quit Portland. <laughs> All right, well, listen, let's uh, go back to that day and uh, set the scene for us there. Well, it was a, a dry day in Oregon, uh, kind of cloudy, and uh, a whale had washed up on the beach a few days before. It was very large. There wasn't an easy way of disposing of it. And uh, as most of the world knows now, th the choice was dynamite. Yeah, so what, what were the other options there? I mean, we know this happens quite a bit. Whales wash yeah. up. You know, how, how do you dispose of the carcass? They'll bury them, they'll drag them away, they'll pull them out to sea. But this one was so large and in such a state of decay, they couldn't easily pick it up. You can't bury something that large. There's water under the sand. It can push back up. If pulled out to sea, it can come back in. But they couldn't pull it out because they would rip it apart. So in consultation with the Navy, the State Highway Department, uh, which was in charge of the disposal, because all beaches in Oregon, as you know, Joe, are public thoroughfares, public mm -hmm. highways, uh, as it were, um, they consulted with the Navy and decided to, to blow it up into tiny little pieces that could easily be disposed of and taken care of by seagulls. And all right. So we're going to go back to your story now. For those of you who don't know what happened next, um, here's how that decision to use dynamite played out. All right, let's bring Paul back in here because uh, at this point, it is raining gigantic chunks of blubber, right? When did you realize this had gone from being interesting to dangerous? Well, my photographer, Doug Brazil, and I were young guys, loved covering the news, loved chasing cops and fire trucks and whatnot, but this was beyond anything we'd seen. And Doug is behind a viewfinder on a sound camera, a large sound camera. I'm behind a viewfinder on a silent camera running a film we hope to use in slow motion later. And you heard the, what the chunks sounded like when they hit the ground around us. And as soon as we realized what was happening and how heavy these things were that were falling, we stopped our cameras and we turned around and we ran in the opposite direction as fast as we could. Um, it's as close to combat, fortunately, as I'll ever get in my life. And uh, it, was, it was scary. Yeah, looking at the damage to the cars, Paul, it's, it's amazing that no one was hurt or worse. Yeah, and I'm really thankful for that, Joe. I don't think we'd be talking about it today if somebody had been, heaven forbid, killed or badly injured. But the second explosion took place when a large piece of, of blubber, about a large coffee table size, flattened a, an Oldsmobile. And Doug and I were running in that direction, but still in the dunes. We couldn't see the parking lot. And so we're running from one explosion, and we hear another explosion in front of us. Now we know, which way do we go now? Uh, proceeded to the parking lot and, and saw what you know, the car had been flattened. Right. Well, what I love about this is how well the story holds up all these years later. I mean, you turned some great lines and, and you played it straight, too. Well, I'm a little bit embarrassed about some of those lines. Uh, <laughs> but the fact is, uh, people who watch uh, journalistic work across the country, print and broadcast, and I work in both, have been kind and say the script did hold up. But, Joe, you got to remember, it was Huntley Brinkley time. It was Walter Cronkite time. Most of the evening news was pretty serious. This was obviously a very weird thing that had happened, and we wanted to report the facts, but have a little fun with it as well. And I have to admit, I had never seen this until I literally, for the first time on the air tonight. So was this just a, was that always going to be the way it went down, or did they use too much dynamite or miscalculate <laughs> the blubber through the air? Like, like what? Who what? messed up the math on this one? <laughs> First of all, you were the only person in the world that hasn't seen the video until tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> secondly, I own that. 
<laughs> the Navy said they didn't use enough dynamite. And uh, oh. got to understand, uh, highway division people, they're used to blowing things up, hard rock and stuff, making highways. But this was a big, soft, blubbery whale sitting on sand over water next to the sea. And so it was hard not only to choose the right amount, which was a half ton, that's what they picked, and, and to pack it correctly. But the bottom line was, uh, we were told later they didn't use enough dynamite. And nobody's asked me about the smell yet, but I will never forget it to my dying day. It was, it hit us like a brick when we stepped out of the car on arrival. And after they blew the thing open, there are not enough words to describe what it smelled like mm. and what we smelled like mm. after we were covered with blood, oh, well, God. blubber, you name it. Well, Paul, I actually was going to ask about the smell because I spent eight years in Seattle and we covered a number of whales that had washed up on the shore. And I think people may be surprised what they do now uh, when those whales wash up. Well, the, Marnie, they'll pick it up and drag it away. Uh, they'll cut it up and take it away. Um, I'm told that in areas where there are not a lot of people in, uh, on the beach, they will actually leave them and let nature do, their, do its job if, it, if the whale or, or sea creature is small enough. But uh, they're back to routine things. In fact, a pod of whales washed up uh, on that beach just south of there uh, shortly thereafter, a year or two year thereafter, and they burned and buried uh, a number of them. So there are any number of things that can be done to dispose of these things, but this one was just a little bit outsized and a little bit too hard to come up with a simple solution. And they wanted more dynamite. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see that one coming. Oh, uh. man. Paul Lindman, it is so great to see you, my friend. Say hi to everyone back there in Portland. Take care of yourself. I'll do it, Joe, and thanks, guys. I appreciate the visit. Thanks, Be good. Paul. Thank you.